Hi everyone, a very warm welcome to all of you to the third lecture of this course on modeling and simulation of communication systems using MATLAB. So last time we had introduced MATLAB and uh, I had uh, told you about uh, what is a variable and uh, how does the MATLAB window look like, what are the commands and uh, how does command assignment work like. So now we will introduce the basic data types used in MATLAB and uh, since uh, this is an EC course, we will go into slight insights of how these data types work. We won't just name them, we will give a slightly more details. So MATLAB generally works with uh, four base data types. Apart from these, there are, uh, there is a logical data type that uh, I should add here. So we will, There is a logical data type, there are the integer data types, the floating point, the character and the string. So character and string basically we will first come to these. So a string is an array of string is an array of characters. So this is it and logical data type we will first introduce logical data type actually. So logical data type is 1 bit take values 0, 1 and uh, a logical data type or an element of a variable with logical data type is subject to the usual rules of uh, binary algebra or Boolean algebra as you might call it and or negation, etc. We will come to all of those in due time. So in this lecture, we will mainly discuss integer and floating point representation. So the default representation used in MATLAB is floating point or variable by default is assigned a floating point value, but uh, we will talk about integer values as well. We can uh, custom introduce integers. So integers can be signed or unsigned that is uh, an integer can contain a signed bit or an unsigned bit and uh, these can be 8 bit, 16 bit, 32 bit or 64 bit. So similarly an integer as the name suggests represents only integer values or if x is declared teacher can only take values from the countable set set. So if x is declared as an integer it can only take values from the countable set of integers. Integers can be 8 bit, 16 bit, 32 bit or 64 bit. Floating point numbers on the other hand represent, so x can be a real number, but uh, there is problem with x being a purely real number as we all know because real numbers have infinite precision, but uh, floating point numbers cannot be infinite precision, there has to be a finite precision. We will come to this in a while. So let us first talk about integers. So Actually, let me first talk about uh, the integer structure here. So to do that, let us create a fresh slide and yes. So in general, an m bit integer can be signed or unsigned. An m bit integer could either be signed or unsigned. So the general structure is that an m bit integer contains b m minus 1 to b 0. These many bits, I uh, will explain the reason for these bits. So this is an this contains values or this bm-1 to b0 
and generally since uh, each of these bits, so these contains m bits which, which are labeled as b0 to bm minus 1 and uh, since each of these bits can bi can take values from the set 1 where i is 0 to m minus 1. So, this is an unsigned integer. In a way, you can say that in case of an unsigned integer, if all of these are 0, so if this takes its minimum value which is 0 and uh, the maximum value will be taken when all of these are 1 which is this fine. In general, if signed integer takes a value x then x equals summation i goes from 1 to or 0 to m minus 1 b i 2 to the power minus 1 this this is the general rule this uh, you might have done in your basic uh, digital electronics course as well so this is how an unsigned integer is defined i'll keep the annotation and in case of matlab i represent x as say clear the command window and uh, in case of matlab i will represent x as say x equals u int 8 i am type casting so let me clear the variables as well yes so this is a matlab window and i define x as u int Fine x as u int 8 15 and x is unsigned integer 15. So, you can see that uh, I get uh, x as 15. Now, the maximum value that an unsigned 8 bit integer can take is uh, 255 as said. So, say I this is allowed. Now, I define y equals 8 1 2 3 4 1234 and it forces y to 255. The maximum value uh, an 8 bit integer can take is uh, 255. Anything above 255, it will round it off to 255. Similarly, but uh, I try to save this as 16 bit integer, it works. Then again, 16 bit, it is limited 32 and 64. So, this is how you represent integers and uh, you save these are, this is how you assign a particular data type to a variable in MATLAB. You declare it as y is u int 8 this. So, let us try another thing. Let x equals u int 8 10 and let y equal u int 8 12. So, x plus y let me say that z equals x plus y. So, z is also u int 8 and its value is x plus y. So, what I will do is I will add the data type. So, class represents the data type that uh, is u int 8. Now, let us say that I want to x plus 234 or rather x plus 250. I want to do this. So, again x since z is typecast to u int 8, it will seal everything at 255. Everything above 255 is stored as 255. This is something that we will revisit when we discuss the effects of quantization much later in this course. Now, so, this was about uh, unsigned integers. Now, let us talk about signed integers. So, 
So, a signed integer is structured like this. So, m bits or p 0 is 2. This has uh, these many bits and it stores bits or it stores numbers in the 2's complement. So, it stores numbers in 2's complement that is if the variable x is if you want to assign a variable x that has a value greater than 0 then the sign bit 0 and are binary values x and if x is less than 0 then the sign bit 1 and the remaining set or the remaining bits are in 2's complement notation. So, let us construct an example over here. So, let us say that I want to store minus 49 for example. I want to store minus 49. So, minus 49 I get 49 is so is 2's complement 49. So, 49 equals 32, 16, 8, 4, 2, 1 and I have to represent it using 7 bits. So, these are 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32. So, this is a 6 bit representation. I want to represent it using 7 bits. So, and this is the 7 bit representation of 49 and if I add the sign bit as well, it is 0 followed by 0. So, this is a sign bit and 1 1 0 0 1 and now I take the 2's complement what I will get is I invert everything. So, 1 1 0 0 1 1 0. So, this is the 1's complement for getting the 2's complement I add a 1. So, 1 1 0 0 1 1 1. So, wait a second I did something wrong over here. Yeah, there were three zeros. So, yes, there were three zeros. So, this equals so the ones complement. So, minus forty nine in ones complement notation is given as one one zero zero one 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 zero, and in the twos complement notation, as we all know, in eight bit representation, it will be one one zero zero one 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 one. So minus 49 in 2's complement notation will be stored like this fine. So, again here so all we have to know is that uh, so it goes from minus 2 to the power m minus 1 to 2 to the power m minus 1 minus 1. So, this is the notation or this is the range a signed integer can take let me demonstrate it in MATLAB. So, MATLAB and x equals int 64, sorry int 8, it should be int 8. So, 8 bit signed integer minus 64 and uh, say I minus 235. So, let us try this and see the minimum value it can take is minus 235 which is minus 2 to the power minus 2 to the power 7 which is uh, for m equals 8 
to minus 2 to the power m minus 1 and the maximum value it can take is if I try this 127. So, it takes values between minus uh, 2 to the power m minus 1 and 2 to the power m as stated here. So, this is how so as I said this works in the 2's complement notation or the signed integers store values in the 2's complement notation and uh, so once we know how it stores numbers the next step obviously is arith arithmetic is quite simple for integers that uh, since uh, you 2's complement addition and subtraction are equivalent or uh, you do the same operation if you want to do 2's complement addition or subtraction that is an XOR I won't go into those details over here. So, a simple example that uh, we consider over here is 7 plus 6. So, we consider 8 bit integer 8 bit representations or here we have considered 7 bit representations. So, 1 and 1 0 1 and 1 0 and you generate a carry. So, these brackets so parentheses represent carry bits. So, parentheses represent carry bits and uh, so you see that this is 13. So, 1 0 1 1. So, these bits 1 1 0 1 with preceding zeros is this is 13 in base 10. And uh, obviously, there is the idea of overflow and underflow that is uh, if you are adding uh, one operand is positive and the other operand is negative, then there will be no problem of overflow or underflow. But uh, if you are adding two positive operands, you might end up generating a carry in the highest bit, but there is no provision of storing that carry in the highest bit. So, as I said you hit the ceiling and once you hit the ceiling you store everything as 255 that is what uh, happened in our uh, unsigned integer example and uh, we can demonstrate that for signed integers as well. So, since everything is uh, stored in 2's complement so if you want to do subtraction you simply store or uh, so 7 minus 6 equals 7 plus minus 6. So, this is the general so this is 8 bit representation in general this will be the m bit representation in addition to the sign bit all the leading bits will be 1. So, you just add in 2's complement notation and uh, you get it. So, with 2's complement notation as we all know from our digital electronic scores or uh, digital circuit scores whatever they call it in your university is that 2's uh, complement addition and subtraction are the same thing it is just a uh, matter of choice or uh, you can always represent uh, any subtraction operation as uh, an addition to a negative number and you can reduce everything to an addition. So, this is fine. So, now we will talk about overflow. So, if we get 2 positive if we subtract 2 positives or 2 negatives there is uh, very little chance of that with those are well within range. So, there is very little chance of uh, or there is no chance of overflow, but uh, if you subtract a positive number from a negative operand. So, if you say you subtracting minus x and you subtracting you are writing it this way. So, x minus y if x is negative y is positive then naturally x is negative and y is positive then x minus y should necessarily be negative our basic mathematics tells us that uh, if x is negative and uh, y is positive then x minus y naturally is negative. But in that case if the sign bit is positive or the final carry is 0 means that uh, you have hit a point where the sign becomes positive. So, which means that you are in trouble. So, you have hit an underflow and uh, you say that or in this case overflow you have hit an overflow and uh, you have reached a point where your 8 bit integer can no longer support those or your finite bit integers can no longer support that and you have reached the limit. Similarly, if you subtract uh, a negative number from positive so you again do x minus y but x is positive y is negative then naturally the result will be positive. You hit the ceiling again 
and uh, you have hit the ceiling when you get the result to be with sign 1. The result will always be positive. So, if the result sign is 1, the result is negative means that uh, you have hit the ceiling and uh, it will tell you that something is wrong. So, let us try this out live in MATLAB and let us see say x equals int 8. 8 bit integer are fine because uh, we get uh, simple numbers to deal with. So, I will put x as negative minus 53 and y as 102. Both are 8 bit integers. So, if I define z equals x minus y. So, in this case uh, x is negative, y is uh, positive. So, 128 we have hit the ceiling because the sign bit will be negative and uh, find it as y minus x w as y minus x 127 we have again subtracting a negative number from a positive number and hitting the ceiling. So, this is how underflow and overflow works. So, these are simple integers this uh, I believe that uh, you have covered in some earlier course as well or uh, this might be taught in a computer architecture course as well, but uh, for completeness or a digital electronics course, but for completeness we had to cover this here. The next thing that might not be covered in a computer architecture course or uh, might will most definitely not be covered in a digital electronics course are floating point numbers. So, floating point numbers are representations for real numbers and uh, these represent very small and very large numbers. So, name floating point signifies that the decimal is floating, you can place the decimal anywhere. So, there is fixed point decimal and there is floating point decimal. No one uses fixed point decimals anymore, so we would not talk about those, we will only talk about floating point decimals. So, these are more like scientific notation. So, in floating point notation the numbers are stored in scientific notation. So, um, I believe we did this in class 7th that uh, in scientific notation if you have to say that I want to save a number say I want to say that uh, I have uh, a thousand so something is thousand so you say 2300 you write 2300 like this this is the standard notation you won't write uh, this you always prefer this notation because this is compact and no matter how big a number so you can represent the Avogadro's number which is 6.023. into 10 to the power 23, something as big as the Avogadro's number and something as small as the Planck's constant. This is a ridiculously big number and uh, this is a ridiculously small number. We can represent uh, both of these numbers. So, if I try to write it in our conventional notation writing this would mean you are adding 23 zeros after uh, 6.023 or you are adding 20 zeros after 6023, too many. You do not want to count the number of zeros every time you perform an operation, you want to write it like this. Similarly, when you are writing the Planck's constant, you will have to have uh, 33 leading zeros, do not want to do that. So, you write it uh, simply. So, similarly in floating point notation, we express everything in binary. So binary the standard notation is because one rule is that you do not put leading zeros. So, in binary everything will be, so if you do not have leading zeros the only other digit in binary is 1. So, in binary if you want to write anything in scientific notation it will always be in this form that it will be plus minus 1 dot something into 2 to the power something else or 1 point x into 2 to the power something else. So, this forms the basic of the floating point notation and uh, this is this floating point notation was standardized by IEEE, I hope you know what IEEE is, was standardized by IEEE in the year 1985 as IEEE standard 754-1985. So, this was developed, IEEE standards are mostly developed when too many people have too many representations of uh, their work. So, in order to consolidate everything into one place like you have the IEEE Wi-Fi standard, you have other standards for your phones as well. So, one I will uh, slightly diverge here and uh, talk about the importance of standards. So, these days you buy a cell phone and uh, you buy a SIM card and uh, what you do is you just 
pull out the or if you assuming that you have a, a smartphone so or even any phone so you buy a cell phone you buy a sim card you just uh, open the phone up put in the sim in the slot close it switch it on and it works seamlessly you don't need to worry about that uh, hey i'm buying uh, say i'm buying the sim of operator x will it work with uh, a phone that uh, is from operator y that doesn't happen if actually that happens you uh, say some brand of phone cell phone starts uh, saying that okay we won't support sims by some operator then the sales for that brand will automatically go down and vice versa so it's always good to have a standardized practice so we wanted a unified representation so we developed this uh, ieee floating point standard and this is almost universally accepted like integers there are two representations for floating point numbers one is the single precision floating point number and two is the double precision floating point number so we will discuss both of these so in the next slide that is so this is the floating point format so as i said i'll just write here that single precision is 32 bits and double precision is 64 bits and so this is the sign this is the exponent and this is the fraction and the way you represent a floating point number is minus 1 to the power s so again as i said uh, if sign bit is 0 it is positive and if sign bit is negative it is negative so you store the sign so here it is not the two's complement notation it's simply the sign so sign 1 plus fraction and 2 to the power exponent minus bias we'll uh, define all of this in the next slide so s sign bit 0 means non negative 1 means negative normalized significant or fraction so we design the significant as i said here that uh, it will always the significant or the mentisa of a floating point number will always be between 1 and 2 so it will always be in the format 1.xxx times something so the biggest number it can be is 1.1111111 which is still less than 2 so the absolute value of the significant will always be between 1 and 2 and since this value will always be between 1 and 2 we can represent it as 1 plus something so now this since this is 1 plus something we can take an advantage of one bit and get rid of that so we pop off that leading one and we store only the thing that is after the decimal we always assume that uh, this is the point where we write it as 1.xxx you cannot do this in base 10 because base 10 there are nine possible digits leading it but here in case of floating point binary representation there is just one possible digit so you always write it as 1.xxx and you just store that xxx or you can say that i store it so if i go here if i represent these bits as say s and these bits as i represent as e1 to el and these bits i represent as f1 to fm so there's an m bit fraction and there's an l bit exponent if i represent it like this then naturally fraction can be 1.f1 to fl fi is binary valued so i can only get away using f1 to fl and all the other bits are forced to zero that is one thing and uh, the significant so this is called the normalized significant or the fraction i will call this the significant or in our ncert terms the mentisa with that uh, one included and the exponent is actually i said that i represent it as 1.f1 to fn into 2 to the power some exponent here in this case i always ensure that stored representation of the exponent is positive but uh, we want to represent both very big and very small numbers or we want to represent numbers that are greater than 1 as well as less than 1 so in order to do that this exponent has to be 
or this can be both positive and negative, but uh, for simplicity or uh, as per the standard, we only want a positive exponent. So, we take the minimum possible negative exponent and uh, force it up to 0. So, what we do is we add a bias term to it. So, the exponent is e1 to e2 n is true exponent. So, e1 to e n I can write it as true exponent plus bias stored as binary. So, e1 to e n is true exponent plus bias stored as binary and whenever we want to represent it as a number, we subtract the bias from this exponent fine. So, this and uh, so with this I will just give some more details about single precision and double precision floating point numbers. So, the all 0 exponent and the all 1 exponent are reserved values. So, you cannot uh, use the all 0 exponent and the all 1 exponent to represent anything. Small, the smallest exponent value that you can assign to anything is zeros followed by 1. So, this is single precision and uh, this is true for both single precision and double precision. So, the actual exponent that you get here as I said the bias in this case is 127 and double precision it is 1023. So, the smallest exponent that you can do is 2 to the power minus 126. So, the fraction and the smallest fraction that you can take is 0. So, the smallest number that you can represent here is 1 into plus minus 1 into 10 to the power minus 26 which is approximately equal to sorry 2 to the power approximately equal to 1.2 into 10 to the power minus 38. Similarly, the largest exponent since you cannot use this, so the largest exponent you can take is this which is equal to 254. So, 254 minus 127, 127 and uh, the largest significant is 2. So, the largest value that you can represent is plus minus 2 or the largest magnitude that you can represent is plus minus 2 into 10 to the power. One, oh sorry, into 2 to the power 127 equals 3.4 into 10 to the power 38. This is for single precision. And if you want to do double precision, then all 0 and all 1s are reserved. The smallest exponent in this case becomes 1022 minus 1022 and uh, the smallest significant is again 1. So, the smallest value that you can represent is plus minus 2 into 10 to the power minus 308 and the largest value that you can represent is uh, again for largest value the exponent is uh, 1023 or the largest significant is 2. So, you can represent uh, plus minus 1.8 into 10 to the power 308 that is the largest value that you can represent. Let us try this out in MATLAB. So, say I want to represent 3 into 10 to the power 72. So, t equals 3 72 this and y equals 3 e minus 85. So, in MATLAB what happens is so I should also add this MATLAB or even this works for Excel as well or any general computation platform this will work. So, x into 10 to the power of y is represented as x y where e generally stands for exponential and x and y are uh, so y's are integers and x can be real numbers. So, that said y equals 3 into 10 to the power minus 87 oh sorry y cannot be. So, y say s equals this. So, s is this. So, now let me do the first thing I will do is q equals. So, this is actually r equals single q so, 0 because uh, you get an underflow or you say that r equals infinity and uh, 0 are reserved words, we will talk about those 
later so so this and uh, say if i write but uh, you can represent as a double precision number so it is something that is valid as a double precision number may not be valid as a single precision number so what i'll do is 1 over q i'll use the exponentiation operator we'll come to this exponentiation operator later so you cannot calculate the square of this thing even in double precision so this exceeds the double precision range as well as uh, uh, stated earlier so we'll come to that and uh, so now we said that uh, there are reserved words certain floating point numbers are reserved for uh, extreme cases so if the exponent is zero fraction is zero either single precision or double precision actually this is the same so these are so in order to avoid confusion what i'll do is i will I'll say max and say max and so i'll do away with the top row of this table delete i'll delete the top row and i will delete these two columns yes now i can i have enough space to expand this table and uh, we will come to the explanation for these terms uh, possibly in the next lecture so if the exponent is zero the fraction is zero it represents a zero obviously it walks like a duck it talks like a duck it is a duck so it's if the exponent is zero the fraction is zero it represents a zero if the exponent is zero and the fraction is non zero it is what something called a denormalized number we'll come to that definition possibly in the next lecture if the exponent takes the maximum possible value the maximum possible reserved word that is all ones both single precision and double precision and the fraction is zero it is called infinity and if it is uh, maximum and the fraction is non zero it is called not a number we will come to its significance later and uh, in case of floating point numbers the precision is relative all the fraction bits are always significant and uh, in case of uh, single precision floating point it is 2 to the minus 23 and uh, it's in case of double it's 2 to the minus 52 single precision and double precision we say a single float or a double float we we are talking about the precision so actually approximately double so it's not double it's approximately it takes the double the number of bits but the precision is not double it's uh, slightly less than double but uh, actually it's more than double so uh, this is six decimal digits of precision in single precision and double precision it is equal to 16 decimal digits of precision in decimal terms it's more than double precision so let us stop uh, with an example or we'll consider representing an example or consider representing this 0.75 as a floating point number and uh, stop with this example so let us try to represent uh, minus 0.75 let us try to represent this number so since this is a negative number sin bit automatically goes to 1 and uh, minus 0.75 is actually represented in binary as this so you represent this as 1.1 into 2 to the power minus 1 so the fraction is so this is the fraction the exponent is minus 1 so minus 1 plus in case of single precision it will be minus 1 plus 127 which is 126 double precision it will be 1022 so the single precision floating point number is represented like this and the double precision number is represented like this similarly next let us try to undo what we have done and uh, let us try to reconstruct a number from a floating point equivalent so what number is represented by the single precision floating point number this so sin is 1 the fraction is this so this represents 1.01 into something so fraction is 01 this means it represents 1.01 and the exponent is 129 so which means that the exponent represents 127 plus 2 which means that it is 1.01 into 
or sin it is minus 1.01 into 2 to the power 2, which means that it is means it is minus 5. So, we are representing minus 5 over here. So, this is uh, another example of floating point. In the next lecture, we will discuss denormal numbers, infinity, not a numbers and uh, we will also consider an example of uh, floating point addition, subtraction, multiplication, division and we will touch upon the ideas of computational complexity and uh, we will discuss uh, how do we, why is all of this needed in uh, simulation of uh, communication systems or simulation of any system in general. So, thank you for now. Thank you.